Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Retro Pop Planet. Back on December 26th, I ran out to my favorite thrift store to donate a post-Christmas pile of old stuff. I wasn't planning on going inside the store, but the parking lot was fairly empty. I popped inside, not really anticipating to find much. And I was wrong. I've had a lot of success with vintage toys at this particular store. So here I am in the bags forest and I immediately found a GoBot, which I do collect. And he's a vintage Slicks from around like 1984. In another bag, I found a Mask Vampire. It's missing a few parts and it's Ryder Floyd Malloy, but it could make for a decent project. Stop like spying, boy. And then I stepped into the toy aisle and this thrift hunt turned from good to great. I came across this big rig all taped together. It had the word stomper sticker to the side of the trailer. I wasn't familiar with this particular toy, but I am very familiar with this. Stomper. Stompers have the guts and muscle to take you where no other car has ever been before and bring you back alive. Stomper. Stomper. Join in the adventure. Imagine. Stomper with Duracell battery only from Shopper. Come along. The truck was in very good condition and clearly marked Shopper, which I had to look up. The only Stomper I ever owned was a white and blue Subaru Brat and I was obsessed with that toy. And to be honest, I have no idea what happened to it. It probably broke as these toys weren't meant to stand up to the amount of destruction that a five or six year old can level as it would have been at the time. I also didn't realize until looking this toy up in store what Shopper even meant. I won't go into the history here because there are numerous places online to learn about these cool little toys. Just note though that they are ingenious examples of miniaturized mechanics. Once I figured out what toy line this truck was from, I got excited. You see, for a time in the early 80s, stompers were some of our absolute faves on the playground. This store separates their bags by theme, and I usually blow past the ones with die cast, but I was eager this time to dive in further. And it certainly didn't take me long to find more. Usually people drop lots of stuff at the thrift, and if you find something, anything uniquely vintage, there's a good chance there are more just like it hiding nearby. The first bag I grabbed had what I thought to be a stomper inside, but we'll circle back to that in a moment. And then I struck jackpot on the second bag. I believe this is a generation one Ford Bronco, probably from 1980. Satisfied with my haul, I drove back home, but now firmly bitten by the stomper bug, I paid another visit the next day and my sneaking suspicion was right because I found more toys. Remember these? Oh boy, there should be some wildlife around here. <laughs> Surprise! The McDonald's Happy Meal guys. Yep, a sticker McDonald's. Regular soft drink. And regular fries. And they aren't lion. Lion! Wow. Stumper! They go where you go at your command by the power of your hand. Stumper! There are eight Stomper push-along trucks in all. One inside every McDonald's Happy Meal. Stomper! Now at McDonald's. Yes, that's right, and I found another. After the holidays, when I returned to work, I hit up a thrift store 20 miles from my house. And as luck would have it, The licensing changed multiple times after the original run, and this is from the Peachtree Playthings era of the late 1990s. After a few more unsuccessful showings at various thrift stores throughout that week, I embraced the fact that the Stomper Well had run dry. They are, after all, pretty rare to find in the wild. Just check out some eBay pricing. So as you've probably noticed by now, I haven't addressed condition. And as you can guess, they weren't working, which leads to the point of this video. Can I fix it? Remember the Datsun 240Z that I thought was a stomper? Turns out it's from the knockoff competitor line of LJN Rough Riders 1981. Rough Riders 4x4, you can try to stop them. Bronco, Firebird, 5x4, 
Poncho and California Hauler. Rough Riders 4x4s, battery for each not included, with four-wheel drive, jumbo deep tread tires, and working headlights. Not only can you make them haul heavy loads, you can make them do wheelies with lots of tricky maneuvers. Rough Riders 4x4, you can try to stop them. Rough Riders 4x4s, California Hauler, Honcho, Firebird, and Bronco, each sold separately from LJN. Incidentally, my uncle had the exact same real car in color. Fixing this toy was a breeze, as it was well taken care of. Simply pop the two tops on the bottom of the car, clean out the contacts and gears with three-in-one oil, new AA battery, and a few good twists of the motor shaft, and she's up and running again. She runs great, but I'll have to replace the bulbs eventually. Now let's check out the Bronco. Unfortunately, it's DOA. Someone raided the motor gears and bulb. Then I opened up the semi. The motor fired up with no tweaking and the light burned strong. I couldn't figure out why the wheels weren't rotating and turns out someone removed the entire drivetrain. What is going on here? I noticed a couple of things about this truck when I looked it up online. The price for starters, and when they come up for sale on eBay, the trailer doors and stand are almost always missing. Luckily mine are good. However, the trailer is yellowing and the sticker was damaged when I pulled off the miles of packing tape. I hate it when thrift stores do this. There are replacement stickers on eBay, and I may retro bright the trailer at some point, but for now I want to tackle the exhaust stacks. One of them is broken, and I have an easy fix for this. 1 8 styrene tubing that I picked up at my local dollar store, trimmed to size to match the other stack, cutting it at an angle. I then glued it in place using a quick set. I also dropped a bit of glue into the top of the stack as the styrene is hollow. I waited for it to dry, trimmed it again, and using a Molotow chrome pen, I finished it off. It's a really satisfying fix because it looks stock. Moving on to the Happy Mill toy. These aren't mechanical like their big brothers, but it had a lot of paint wear. I touched up the bumpers and windscreens with some inexpensive gloss black model paint just so it would display better. Moving on to the Dozer, even though it was a different company making them at this point, it's basically the same mechanics. However, I couldn't get the battery cap off. I didn't want to break it, so I ended up working around it slowly with a small flathead screwdriver until it popped off. I was also listening to Mac Miller during the video, so I had to mute the sound or risk a copyright strike. Check it out though, it still has the original Stomper battery, which is cool but it also leaked, so I've got a few corroded points that I'm gonna have to address. I also had trouble with the motor cover, which I need to access because the motor is seized. But I finally worked it out of its casing. After a few quick flicks though, I get it working. It's running strong, and I throw some three-in-one oil to lube it up. If it has the original battery, that means it hasn't worked in like over 20 years. I get the shell clip back on and test it again, this time with the lights out. You may have noticed that it's missing its tread, and I have no idea where I would source those from. Hit me up in the comments if you can steer me toward a great aftermarket seller. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Overall, I would call this a success mainly due to the epic score of finding 40 plus year old stompers at a thrift store. The motors and bulbs are fairly easy to come by online, but I need help sourcing gears for the Bronco and gears and drivetrain for the semi. There has to be someone out there making 3D prints of these parts. Thanks for reminiscing with me and I'll catch y'all in the next video.